All right, well, it's time for another project on Edna, and today it's going to be some work on the furnace. So we have tried the furnace a few times since we got Edna and it has never worked. And so right now I have the gas turned off here. The gas is on, there's a valve up here, and it's off back at the propane tank. And so uh, we've tried it with the propane on and doesn't doesn't work. We get no heat. And so I started to do some troubleshooting and um, the first thing to check is the fuses, which I've already checked. And so there's there's one fuse right here on the furnace itself. There's another fuse back in the electrical cabinet with the, you know, basically where the shore power comes in and the other circuit breakers and, and fuses are, are all included. Uh, this is a 12 volt system and so it runs on 12 volt battery power and so there's a 12 volt automotive fuse uh, shown just in the fuse block back there with the where the shore power comes in. Um, and on this coach it's fuse number seven I think is, is for the furnace. So I've checked the fuses, the fuses are okay. The blower fan does come on but we get no ignition from the the igniter itself and so some of the first things that i did were just you know making sure that i was getting power to it because the fan comes on well i i think that means i'm getting power but it was good to double check fuses and things anyway just to make sure that maybe you know i don't know a fuse was was different between the fan and, and the rest of the system but fan is working and we're not getting not getting any ignition so going through troubleshooting for the igniter or no spark problem the first thing that it says to check is the sail switch and the sail switch is located on the back bottom of the the fan housing and there isn't any way to get to it without disconnecting the wiring the gas line pulling this out and, and checking it there. But I looked at the wiring and it looks like the sail switch is run in series with the limit switch. And the limit switch is, is right here on the front. It's got a connection on the bottom and a connection on the top. And the point of the limit switch is it's a temperature sensor. If this gets too hot, then it opens up and cuts power to the gas valve and turns off the furnace so that it can cool down. So what I have thought is because they're in series, if I'm getting 12 volts at the top of this, when the fan comes on, then it would mean that I'm getting power through the limit or through the uh, sail switch. So I think I can check both of those at the same time to see if I'm getting power uh, through the sail switch and the limit switch. So I'm going to disconnect this. And I'm going to set up my multimeter with a couple alligator clips and we'll see what our voltage is through that. So be back with some more in a minute. Okay. So I've got my multimeter set up. I'm connected to the top of the limit switch and to ground. And right now I've got no voltage here. But when I turn on the thermostat and the fan comes on, I should it should take just a moment from when the fan comes on to when the sail switch closes. And then I should see 12 volts through this uh, piece of the circuit. So I'm gonna go turn on the thermostat. All right, yeah, and it did just take a moment there, and it's at 11.25 volts, which is close enough. It should be working well, except I have a wire disconnected right now. Okay, well, we're in the garage because I happen to have a parts furnace to go along with my unworking or non-working furnace in the coach. And so I'll describe a little bit about what we're gonna do here. So we, we checked the sail switch 
we checked the limit switch and we were getting voltage through those. And so the next thing to test for a no spark problem is this igniter cable right here. Um, and then if you have continuity through that, the next thing is the control board. Unfortunately, there's no way to get to the control board or the other end of this igniter cable without taking the furnace out. And so before I disconnect the gas and disconnect the wiring of my coach inside the, the motorhome there, um, I thought I would come in and show this one. Now this frame housing area stays mounted in the coach and this part slides out. So, not a very delicate thing, but now we can get a good look at what this looks like. So, we have the igniter cable here, and it goes through a grommet back to this connection on the control board, and then this is the control board. And the only connections between this, other than the exhaust and the air intake in the back, which will just slide out, uh, is the gas line and the wiring. So it'll be pretty easy to disconnect these couple of things, slide this out, so that I can test the igniter cable and then also test this control board. Although the troubleshooting that I've seen says that there's basically no way to test this and you just need to install a new one if, if you're not finding a problem with this uh, cable itself. So next step is to go back in the coach and take the furnace out and we'll see where we go from there. Okay, so we actually put it back in. Uh, we talked a little bit about what uh, we were going to do on the furnace. Um, once I had it out in the garage and I checked things out, I checked the continuity of the uh, cable to the igniter. I also looked at the connections on the control board and things like that and I didn't really see too much wrong but I did see that there was a lot of bug like uh, mud bug type of uh, houses and things that were like inside of the firebox uh, apparently they've gone in the air intake and so I think I will put some kind of a screen on the outside to try to keep that from happening again but uh, as I was taking things apart and looking at it I shook out a huge pile of all of this mud and, and gunk and bug parts and stuff out of the firebox. So that was definitely a problem, not good. And so I, I, I did that. I also found some wiring that had been taped up and didn't look very good. And so I, I basically repaired some of that wiring and put wire nuts on it to clean things up. And I thought after doing that, uh, really the next step was to order a new control board. Um, dinosaur boards has a replacement board for these um, but before I ordered that board I thought I would just hook it back up and see what happened and to my surprise we started getting a spark and it ignited it lit it's it's running and so I think what we had was um, just some bug stuff mud who knows what in there too close to the igniter uh, preventing it from from sparking and by, by shaking out all of that stuff, it cleaned up. And so it's running, we're getting hot air, um, actually seems pretty good. So you can see the firebox here. 